how has a narcissist affected your absolute beliefs about yourself? Well, gaslighting, right? And the constant, you know, love bombing and devaluing will create confusion in your mind and conflicted beliefs. Now, if we're talking about parental narcissism where you've grown up with it, it's pretty obvious that, you know, children believe that who they are, right? Based on how they're treated as children and based on how their families operate and based on what a parent, you know, teaches you about who you are because, and, and, and narcissistic people indoctrinate their children with all kinds of, of thoughts and beliefs that serve the narcissist, right? So that's a more obvious one, right? But it's, it's not that you can just take that and then be okay. Like, oh, I understand. It wasn't really me. It was my toxic parents. Okay. Well, I'm all better now, right? No, because it goes deeper. It goes into beliefs. So what happens is you have this go on, you have something happen really subtle. I'm going to tell a little story. Okay. This is somebody, uh, a story of someone has told me a long time ago of, um, putting, uh, of, of being very young, about three or four years old and the baby sibling was crawling around getting near the light socket. And the child, the three-year-old child said, mom, mom, mommy, 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 the baby, the baby, but they're three, right? So they don't know to go pick up the baby, right? Because they're three. And the mom on the phone, toxic narcissistic mother says, you're always interrupting. You be quiet. You sit there and be quiet when I'm on the phone. Don't you interrupt me, you know? And, and then the baby inevitably reaches for the socket. Baby was fine but did get, you know, a zap, right? So mom says to the, to the three-year-old, why weren't you watching your baby brother? This is you. You should have, you should have, you saw it happening. Why didn't you stop it? This is to a three-year-old. So being that we, we know that this mother is narcissistic. Okay. As an adult, we're like, shame on you mother. Right. But the, to the little kid, perfectionism set in in that moment. I must be perfect or someone is in peril. Someone will be harmed, right? My baby, my baby, <laughs> right? Will be, will be hurt. So I must be perfect. And that set a belief system in this person's life for the rest of their life. And then what happens with these, these, cause that's a shock, right? That's a shocking thing that happens. And it's, it's met with survival and, um, fear. And, you know, it was a big impactful moment in this person's life. Okay. But then what happens is throughout your life, you have these beliefs reinforced because of course there's, there's always opportunity for perfectionism to creep in. Right. But because it was such a shocking, harsh, um, implant into this person's mind, everything in life seems to be a measure of that perfection right? So where someone else might not feel the same thing as perfectionism, if something happens to this person, like say they fail a test or someone says they're cheating and they're not cheating in school and they say they're cheating, some of us would just shrug our shoulders and say, okay, whatever, punish me. I don't care. And others who have this perfectionism need and whatever, or, or, or have to have the truth be told, right? react in a way that reinforces the belief in themselves that they must be perfect or else. So whatever the belief is, see, this is how it happens. It's, it's, it's implanted by the toxic parenting, or it, we're talking about parents here for a second, and then it's reinforced by life. But what if you didn't have all that? What if your upbringing was fine and your parents were, you know, healthy, normal people? And suddenly your beliefs have changed. Suddenly you don't like yourself anymore because you've been with a toxic narcissist, right? And suddenly you're, you, you're, you realize and you recognize you have a lot of self-hatred or a lot of self-loathing or a lot of, you know, you're down on yourself. You don't feel very good about yourself and that these beliefs are there. Where did they come from? Well, they come from the toxic you know, programming that the narcissist is giving you that you're not worth anything because a narcissist needs to be on top. They need to be superior. They need, if you are an amazing person, it's going to take a lot to knock you down because they got to get you really, really far down, <laughs> right? They got to get you so low that you believe it. And it takes a lot to get you there when you're a pretty darn good person. Okay. And so they do. And they systematically 
devalue, 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 devalue. With a little bit of love bombing, it is the stuff they want you to believe about yourself. Oh, you're really, you're really hot. Oh, you're really, you're really helpful. Oh, you're really the things that serve them, right? And then the parts of you that are actually you cut you down, knock you down until your belief about yourself is pretty thin and weak <laughs> and sad and all of that compared to how it used to be. Maybe if you, if you had, you know, if you had it, didn't have it, you know, have the toxic growing up. So uh, even people, what I'm getting at here is even people who had a strong belief system can be affected by narcissists in how they then believe and feel about themselves and the beliefs they have about themselves. Even if it's just as simple as my picker's broken, I picked a narcissist. Okay, that's a belief that is inaccurate. Narcissists will slip in anywhere they can, and covert narcissists are hard to see. So it's not that a picker is broken or that you, you know, chose unwisely sometimes it's that that person fooled you and anyone can be fooled by a narcissist especially when you didn't know what one was you get discarded or you leave or you decide i'm done with them and you live with them anyway and you're like whatever and you know you think okay i'm over it i'm getting through this and then these sneaky little beliefs are underneath it and so you're living your life you say you're completely narcissist free and you're feeling like you're healing and you're just out in life. And these little or huge beliefs are kind of getting in the way of everything you try to do. And it feels like life starts repeating itself because as we know, or maybe we don't know, what we believe is how our life will be led. What we, the, the, the way we think and feel and the way the energy that comes from us is how life will meet us. And that's not to say people with amazing energy who will think positive all the time don't have bad things happen. That's not the point. The point I'm saying is that the cycles that we repeat, they may have bad things happen in ways they didn't expect, right? But it's not that we can make ourselves happy all the time. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is when we see these patterns and we see these beliefs of being part of the pattern. So what do we do with that? Right? How do you get through that? These beliefs, don't they feel like they're part of you and who you are? Don't they really and truly feel like it's how you think? Like it's how you, that's just how I am. Doesn't it? At least for me, it took a long time to get past that, to realize it actually isn't. But it truly does feel like, I well, I, I, it's the only way I've ever felt. So why would I, why, how is it wrong? They're part of who you were taught to be. They are the training you had as a child to become exactly what that training wanted you to become someone that could be could, influenced by the narcissistic parent. They don't ever want to let go of the grip. A narcissist, even if it's not your parent, right? They don't want to let go of the grip of the control and the power that they have over you. Because if you had a, a mind of your own and you succeeded and you were something other than they decided you were, well, then how would their reality be real? How would their delusion of the whole world be accurate? For them, yeah, it has to stay that way. It's about unwinding it and, and, and recognizing it, I think. So I think just seeing it is part of it. It's one piece, seeing these beliefs. Uh, it's interesting because you can get pretty darn healed and the beliefs will still be there. And you would think they would just fade away. But it's like it is such a deeply ingrained neural pathway, right? It's such an in deeply ingrained thing that it it's beyond habit. It's belief. Belief is a strong word. This is where coming back to finding what's true for you, not what is the opposite of the belief. So if your belief is you're not as smart as your sister, your new belief does not have to be, I'm smarter than my sister, or I'm just as smart as my sister. It can be, wow, I'm a really curious person. I have a lot of wisdom. It's interesting how my brain is so willing to help me change or work or heal. It can be things like that, which are, it's sort of like instead of countering the belief, adding in a something that feels true. And how do you get there? Come into yourself, meaning, 
get present to yourself, be present for yourself. It's a, it's a slowing down and a relaxation of your thoughts and your emotions and an awareness on your body at the same time that can allow you to be present. So what feel yourself sitting there, find some way to be mindful, quickly, short, five seconds, not even a long time, whatever it works for you, whether it's following your breathing or <clears throat> noticing a body part or holding something in your hand or um, something really in the body, not so much concentrating on something outside of yourself with your eyes, something really that you can embody the moment. So the time has that wonderful slowed down feeling that isn't scary, right? It's just relaxed. And then take a breath and on the exhale, notice your chest. And then listen to your thoughts. Do those feel like truth? Those, those beliefs, they, they spin up in your head. And so offer them some acknowledgement. Yeah, I hear you, belief. Oh, yes, that's a belief. Thanks for reminding me, brain. You know, whatever it is, so that you're not fighting with it. And the emotions that go with it, feel them in your body. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm tracking with that. I can feel that, that heavy depression set in when I realize I feel, I believe I'm not as good as my sister. Okay. Wherever it hits you in your body, give it some love, give it some attention from your presence, from your, from where you love from. Okay. And then just let it go. You don't need to replace the feeling. Not right now, right? You don't need to replace the thought. You're just aware of the other two in a different way. And as this evolves and you work with this, different thoughts can come in your head. How to, how to feel what is the true belief? And then it becomes a question. I don't know. What will, what will it take to show me what I really do believe? How, how can I open up to who I truly am? Okay, those questions can come up. And if you stay in question, you start creating a curious pathway, right, toward your own awakening to who you are that has nothing to do with anybody else or the influence of anything else. The other piece to this, the very practical piece, is allowing the narcissistic people to be who they are and allowing that to be a truth, not about you, a truth about them a truth about their reality, the way they see the world, the very narrow viewpoint that they have, their point of view, and that that has nothing to do with you. And I know we want our parents to love us and to, you know, all the stuff, but can you force it? No. If they, if, if they didn't, when you were a tiny baby, <laughs> what's going to make them now? And that has nothing to do with you. It's a sad reality and there's grief around that. And also that's their loss, right? That is their shortcoming in this life is that they couldn't do that. And so you give yourself the love you need and start creating a different reality that does not need their approval.